Hello my dear students, this is Marwa and in this video I'm going to talk about how to draw and label the anatomical landmarks of the lower first premolar. We can see the tools from five aspects which are buccal, lingual, mesial, distal and occlusal as well. Now let's begin with the buccal aspect. As we know, the geometric outline is trapezoid with the shortest uneven side cervically. The cervical line curved root-wise. The root here is cone-shaped with tapered distal curved apex. From this aspect, we can see the buccal cusp which is large and pointed. Also, we have elevation and depressions that appearing at the buccal surface like cervical ridge which is present as a cervical one third, the buccal ridge that extends cervical occlusally in the middle of the crown. Also, we have two shallow vertical depression grooves that present median distal to the buccal ridge. Now, let's come to the lingual aspect. The lingual surface is much narrower than the buccal surface that's due to the severe lingual convergence. The lingual cusp is very short and reaches two-thirds the length of the buccal cusp that make most of the occlusal surface appear and can be seen from this aspect. Again, the cervical line is curved root-wise Here, there is a depression which is the mesiolingual developmental groove that present at the mesiolingual line angle. Actually, it's played at the middle one third. Let's go to the mesial aspect. Here we can see both cusps, the buccal and the lingual cusps. The crown here is curved at the crown he is severely tilted lingually that makes the buccal cusp tip at one line with the root apex. We can see the maximum convexity here present uh, at the cervical one third buccally, which represent the cervical ridge, while the maximum convexity ling lingually present at the middle one third. The cervical line here is curved toward the occlusal and the root here is wide and has a deep developmental groove. The mesial contact area located at the junction between the occlusal and the middle one third. We can also see the mesial marginal ridge that severely sloped buccolingually. Also we can see the mesiolingual developmental groove. The distal aspect is identical to the mesial aspect, except the cervical line is less curved than the present at the mesial surface. Also, the distal contact area present more cervically. The distal marginal ridge is perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. Also, the root has a depression, developmental depression. And finally, let me see the occlusal surface of this tooth. The geometric outline is diamond in shape. The crown thickness is wider than its width, as we know. The characteristic feature or the characteristic landmarks that present uh, on the occlusal surface of the lower four is the mesiolingual developmental groove that present at the mesiolingual line angle. This is number three. Also we have two depressions which are mesial and distal rounded triangular fossae that present at both sides of transverse ridge that gives the tooth the nickname of snake eyes. 
Each fossa has a bit in its bottom. This is a mesial marginal ridge and distant marginal ridge here. The buccal triangular ridge is larger than the lingual triangular ridge, which is actually undeveloped. The two ridges are meeting in the transverse ridge. So we have some characteristic features or landmarks present in the lower four. Number one, mesolingual triangular, uh, a mesolingual developmental group, sorry. Number two, the snack eyes appearance. That's due to the, the pits uh, or the circular fossae that, and the, the pits that present at its bottom. Thank you.